1953. That was to commemorate the opening of Gentlemen Prefer Blondes at this theater. That, of course, was the real beginning of the legend of Marilyn Monroe, a legend that endures today, 25 years after her death, not only endures, but absolutely steamrolls. Everywhere you look today, there's Marilyn Monroe on posters, on billboards, in shops and displays. In the 1980s, she's the absolute epitome of the words movie star. She's been dead for 25 years, but she still symbolizes sex appeal and mystique to the public. She's also a powerful influence on today's would-be movie stars, like Madonna, here trying to do a Marilyn in a music video. As a box office name, Marilyn Monroe is even more of a moneymaker today than she was in the 1950s and 1960s when she was making movies like Let's Make Love and most of those movies which she hated doing. And very few of them were, in truth, box office hits in their day. But in 1987, Marilyn Monroe's name and those same movies are powerful enough to entice companies to bring out new Monroe videotapes. CBS Fox will have 10 Monroe tapes in stores as of August 30th. On one hand, all of this probably would have delighted Marilyn. She did, after all, thrive on publicity, and she did everything possible to encourage it, especially at the start of her career. What she wouldn't have liked, no one would, is what intrigues much of today's public about Marilyn Monroe. The fact she died so young, at the age of 36. The fact her death is still clouded in rumors of possible suicide, even murder, connected to Washington, D.C. politics and the Kennedys. And the fact she spent more time in front of newsreel cameras entering and exiting hospitals and divorce courts than she ever did making movies. She got the fame she wanted, but at a cost no one would be willing to pay. One of the great tragedies of Marilyn Monroe, as we look back at the legend today, is that during her lifetime she was acutely aware that Hollywood considered her something of a freak, a temporary sex symbol to be joked about. A girl possessing a major body, but only a minor talent. It's only in retrospect, after her death, after she was beyond hearing the praise, that people have come to realize she was also an exceptionally gifted and talented actress. An actress with a capital A. You know, actually, maybe the fates were very good to Marilyn. She would be 61 years old today. That's a very difficult age for a sex symbol to retain an audience and her dignity. It's very hard to contemplate the kind of roles that she would be offered or the life she'd be leading in 1987. But I, I do suspect she would love the fact that fickle Hollywood, the one that she knew so well, still remembers her so well 25 years later. And that's Who's News in Hollywood on August 3rd, 1987. Nine minutes after now. Marilyn Monroe died 25 years ago today. Joel Siegel now remembers how Marilyn's been immortalized. Good morning. Her life had all the elements of tragedy. She was never sure of her real name. Her mother was placed in a mental institution just after she was born. She was raised in an orphanage in a series of foster homes. She was sexually abused at eight. Her foster mother refused to believe her. She married at 16, divorced a few years later, but it was either marriage or another orphanage or another foster home. Her husband worked at Lockheed. This was during World War II. One of the guys he worked with was Robert Mitchum, who knew her then, very quiet, very shy. And Mitchum has said more than once, she never thought of herself as pretty, let alone sexy. And all her life, she never did. The rest of us did, though, all two billion of us. <laughs> like jello on springs. No. Billy Wilder, who directed Some Like It Hot, said extracting a performance from her is like pulling teeth. But I have never met anyone as utterly fabulous on the screen, and that includes Garbo. If there's ever anything I can do for you, I can think of a million things. That's one of them. Marilyn Monroe at the height of her career. And at the beginning, the very beginning, this might be the first motion picture film of her ever taken. A test to help get modeling assignments. It worked. This extremely rare footage from the excellent and extraordinary documentary, Marilyn Monroe Beyond the Legend from Brighton Video. Hi, Evie. Hi, small change. Dangerous Years was her second film. 20th Century Fox cut her one line out of her first, Scudda Who, Scudda Hey. They said she wasn't photogenic and dropped her contract. She made this commercial for Union Oil and made the rounds. Cynthia will just love that royal triton. 
Groucho Marx auditioned every starlet in Hollywood for the big buxom blonde bombshell role in Love Happy. He really did. Marilyn Monroe got the part. The secret word was wow. So men are following me. Really? I can't understand why. That same year, 1950, fasten your seatbelts, it's all about Eve. And she steals the screen from George Sanders and Betty Davis. Then you two must have a long talk. I'm afraid Mr. DeWitt would find me boring before too long. You won't bore him, honey. You won't even get a chance to talk. 20th Century Fox asked her back. Gentlemen prefer blondes, made her a star. Kiss of the hand may be quite continental, but diamonds are a girl's best friend. And in the seven year itch, she created her own icon. And in her life, she created her own legend. 25 years after her death, there were more than 40 books in print on Marilyn Monroe. Some of the newer releases are complete reference, Marilyn from A to Z. Marilyn Monamore never seen photographs by Andre de Dien, who met her in 1945. Reminiscences by life photographer Eve Arnold. Photographs by George Barris, some taken just a month before she died. Fascinating text by Gloria Steinem. Hi, Dr. Fulton. Hi. This month, CBS Fox will release 10 Marilyn Monroe features. Some like Monkey Business with Cary Grant and Ginger Rogers, not seen in more than 30 years. she hasn't done anything. I'll pull that blonde hair out by its black roots. It's unprecedented, but 25 years after her death, Marilyn Monroe is still box office. What made her unique? She was sexy and innocent, voluptuous and vulnerable. A terrific actress, Josh Logan, who directed her in Bus Stop, called her a genius. She acted the sexy. She didn't act the vulnerability. Oh. <laughs> the sweetest, tenderest thing anyone ever said to me. So afraid to perform, her psychiatrist little girl gave her a copy of The Little Engine That Could to give her the confidence to sing Happy Birthday to President Kennedy. said, now I can retire from politics, having had happy birthday sung to me in such a wholesome manner. There were rumors, depression, pills, marriages that didn't work, children she wanted and couldn't have. This is footage from her last film, Something's Gotta Give. The film was never finished. The last day on the set was her 36th birthday. She couldn't play the part anymore. Less than two months later, she was dead. And 25 years later, we still can't believe that anyone this beautiful could be that sad. You just shine in my eyes. That's my true feeling, Rosalind. What makes you so sad? I think you're the saddest girl I ever met. <laughs>